Hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and P.L. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is Friday, October 4th, 2019. And uh, as many of you know, we did several videos this week. We did the uh, uh, auction results for uh, Asia Week in New York, uh, which was pretty interesting. And we did a preview, auction preview uh, video yesterday that we put up. Uh, for the sales that will start in Hong Kong uh, next week. Uh, and this is that, that slew of sales of great stuff, top quality material. And uh, as I mentioned at the start of that video, it's, it's going to be a real test of the market to see how much interest there is in six and seven figure items, all of the, the very rarest. It's all great stuff. Uh, but we're going to see uh, what the appetite is still for the, for, in the market for that, that, that level of material. And that much material all in the course of a couple of days. Sotheby's did a great job with the catalogs. The catalogs are on bid amount uh, on the, uh, in the reference section. If you scroll over here, the reference bookcase, and you can browse through them, and you can watch the video over on YouTube. All right, now, uh, let's see, a couple of things, a couple of quick notes. Uh, many of you remember this uh, sleeve vase from a few weeks ago, the, the, the copy transitional sleeve vase. It is back up. Whoever, whoever bid on it, if anybody actually bid on it, who knows what was going on there, it's back up again. And it's got seven days to go, and uh, it's rather suspiciously has, is up to $3,683 in the first couple days, um, which seems improbable to me. And uh, it is still the same copy, so uh, stay away from it. This is uh, the seller is Clemming 888. All right. The next thing is this. This this has turned up, um, and this is a seller. Uh, it's called the Zeiser Museum, and um, uh, I knew a little bit about these folks uh, about over 10 years ago, uh, but uh, I'd hear their name once in a while. And this is being listed as a Mark and Period Kung Shi Bowl. Uh, it is not a Mark and Period Kung Shi bowl. It's a brand new bowl. It's a total copy. Um, here's a picture of the inside of it. Those of you who have been around for a while will know it's not. It only has one bid. And look at that ghastly glaze. Holy mackerel. And uh, it's it's only got one bid. It's got a few days to go. But just because that is a bid on it, I'm just mentioning it in case you've got it on a watch list. You're thinking of buying it. Do not buy it. Okay, this is a fake. And uh, there's another bowl up that he has as well. It's a Dao Sai enamel bowl that's also a fake. Uh, they're listing that as a Yong Chen Mark and Period Bowl as a combination bid and buy it now item. Uh, the bid, the, 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 it's got one bid and it has a buy it now of 149 bucks, or it has maybe it has no bids. But anyway, it's a copy. It's no good. All right. And lastly, uh, a couple of folks had complained about a few things that were peering over on. Uh, Catawiki that weren't quite looking right and I agreed with them and we did some browsing this week and I came across this um, on here it's listed as a Kangxi uh, bowl clearly not Kangxi clearly uh, early 20th century uh, absolutely mediocre piece of ceramic uh, there's been not much interest in it I did send this uh, a note over to the people at Catawiki and say, look, you guys got to, you know, tighten up on this. This is a fake. This is not Kangxi. It's a much, much, much later um, a, a piece of porcelain that was, you know, that were maybe worth, you know, thirty dollars. Certainly not Kangxi period. So, um, and I'll keep an eye on it. And if more things like this turn up, I'm going to let them know again. All right. Uh, and thanks to those of you that that have been sort of pointing out some other ones, and um, uh, I have sent those in as well. All right, now over here, this was that nifty um, 100 Boys flower pot, the Republic period one that was up last week that I thought was so wonderful. I love the decoration on it. I thought it was just beautifully done. Quality decoration throughout, even though it's a later piece, but superbly painted, just wonderful planter. And uh, apparently everybody loved it because it ended up selling for $12,600. And I don't think that's a crazy price. Uh, the more I looked at this thing, the more I liked it. It was a wonderful thing. All right. And then on to this. This was one of the bargains of the week. It was this dandy little um, uh, Famille Rose, late 18th, early 19th century export terrain with the pod finial. And uh, somebody got a great little buy. It went for $74.43. All right. Um, not bad. Okay. That's a nice little thing with an unusual top on it and, you know, for, for under under 100 bucks, great great going, whoever got that. And then on to this, do you remember we talked last week about the, the two uh, Chinese Amari Kangxi vases that were up, these guglets with the, with the garlic neck, 
and one of them was damaged and one of them was perfect. And I sort of speculated that, you know, the good one would be worth, you know, twelve, sixteen hundred bucks and the, the one that's damaged is worth a lot less. But maybe, you know, if you bought them both, um, you get the, the, the one that's damaged repaired, you'd have a heck of a nice pair of aces. Well, the, um, the, the perfect one ended up selling for fifteen hundred and thirty five dollars. All right. In perfect condition. And um, the uh, other one, this one, with the damage at the top, which could be repaired probably for oh, three hundred dollars or so, um, ended up selling for two hundred ninety-six dollars. So, for a, a, a little bit of a little bit of money, you could restore the two of them. And I hope somebody, I hope the same person bought both, because these look fabulous together on a mantle or on a shelf. And um, the the repairs at the top are not that serious. It's actually a break. The pieces are there. They just have to reattach it and clean it up a little bit and. They have a pretty nice pair of vases, very nice pair of vases, actually, because they're beautifully decorated, and the enamels and the gilding are all in great shape. So it's just, it's just a matter of some little bit of damage around the mouth. Not bad. And then on to this, the, uh, this, this rather nice-looking uh, Kangxi Femi Ver dish. Here it is. Uh, nice-looking decoration, uh, well done, and all that. And uh, at the end, it did pretty well. It brought $1,116. Rather pretty uh, plate. This is a, a seller we, we see periodically. Doesn't sell a lot. Year in antiques. But when they have things, they tend to be pretty nice. They're, they're located over in London, and um, they get, they get good-looking things. And that nice platter uh, that we had talked about last week, the uh, Armorial uh, Export Platter, 18th century, with Famille Rose with the garden scene, and then the crest at the top. Uh, uh, this was this was I thought was pretty nice. I like the nice clear yellow in it, and the way that the the robes are done. And uh, I guess some folks liked it pretty well. It ended up going for uh, six hundred and sixty dollars, but for a, a big a thirteen inch armorial platter, that's not a bad price. That's not a bad price at all, actually. All right, and then over here, uh, this is this was I thought a very very pretty. Uh, they, they call these shrimp dishes. Um, export uh, porcelain. Uh, this was made in the first half of the 19th century. Uh, very unusual upper edge here, but the handle is this. This handle, the way it's it's decorated with this light blue sort of stipple ground. I guess it is. Uh, get a better shot of it here. There it is. See the little dots all over it, and the flowers and whatnot. Beautifully painted. Nice quality enameling on this. Here's a picture of the back of it. That's what the foot rim on these should look like. Sort of that that ivory creamy oatmeal color, a little bit of orange peel. Nice looking plate. This was a good example, and it's not a common pattern. It's a bit unusual. And uh, it ended up going fairly well, but not again, not a bad price. Uh, $392, and, and with a nice Chinese scene uh, with a you know the garden balustrade and all that. Uh, not bad. I, 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 I think that I, think that, that I would have thought that would have brought a little bit more, because it was very, very pretty. And then on to this, the hand-painted, uh, this was a lidded box that slips over. It's actually like a little incense burner. It comes apart. There's the inside of it. Nice Famille Rose enamels, good deep cobalt blue, 19th century example. And ended up selling for $708, um, which is sort of what these, these nice little table items are bringing these days. Good looking thing. And um, bravo. And then on to this, the uh, armorial, uh, 18th century armorial plate. Uh, this was a very, very pretty plate. Unfortunately, the, the seller, I don't know, I, and this seller gets good stuff. He gets good export porcelain. Um, this is Pafuni, is his, his seller name. Uh, he, he, he does something with his photos in Photoshop. He sort of over sharpens them and over brightens them. Um, if you take your pictures well, you shouldn't have to touch them. Um, uh, and this this is vastly over sharpened and vastly over, over juiced, and uh, there's no reason to do that. It did fine at the end. It brought seven hundred and seventy-six dollars, but I think he'd do a little better if he left his pictures alone. Uh, but it was a nice-looking plate, and the gilding was in good shape. But I, you know, it, maybe with a little a little less messing around with his pictures, this would bring uh, might have brought twelve or thirteen hundred. All right, and then over here to this bronze. I like this bronze. It was a Qing Dynasty bronze, 19th century probably. But I like the fact that it had relief worked figures going around the outside of it. Hope you took the time to look at it. Nice quality release work, relief work here with, uh, with the mortals and so forth. Uh, here's a picture of the bottom. There's some sort of little repair or something happened here long ago. 
but a uh, nice looking thing. There's a little, there's a little creasing on the edge. This seller uh, really shows every little detail and and what he thinks might be a flaw, but uh, calligraphy all over it. Here's the bottom of it. Very typical of the 19th century examples. There it is, a nice, nice shot of it. it. Does a good job, and uh, this ended up selling for six hundred and fifty-seven dollars, which I think was perfectly fine. The bronze had nice color and it was interesting and unusual. And uh, 19th century bronze, uh, bronzes uh, in late 18th century ones all, uh, often tend to get overlooked. And I think there's still a relative bargain on the market compared to other bronzes. All right. And then over here, I think this was a, a great buy. Somebody, got, I think, got a very good buy on this. This was a nice uh, immortal set uh, in Femil Rose. Uh, here's a picture of the bases of them. Nice one, and they're all he identified them all, which was kind of fun. Here they are, beautifully and beautifully decorated, all the way around. Nice strong colors. Here's the front, all right. And uh, they ended up selling, I think, pretty reasonably, fourteen hundred and fifty-one dollars for eight of them. Um, I've seen many cases where just one of these sells for two hundred and fifty um, or so, two hundred and fifty, two hundred, two seventy-five in that range, just for one. Here you have the complete set. And uh, for fourteen hundred and fifty-one dollars, which I think was a a, a a nice buy, if you're a collector of uh, porcelain figurines. And then over here to this, the Indian little Indian patinated bronze. I thought this was a nice little bronze, nice surface on it, uh, not too worn. These are often extremely worn. <clears throat> this one it wasn't too bad at all, and it still had its plinth, and I didn't see any damage to it. And look at this, it went for just one hundred and seventy-one dollars. Nice, nice little bronze for a very reasonable price. Um, these can sell uh, uh, at times in auctions for, uh, you know, three to five hundred. So somebody got a dandy buy on this. All right. Like I always say, leave a bid for heaven's sakes. If you see something before you put it on your watch list, leave a bid on it first and then you get double notifications. If you don't put it on your if you just put it on if you if you just uh, uh, uh uh, bid on if you bid on it first and put it on your watch list after you won't be able to put it on your watch list put it on the watch list first and then bid on it and then it's then it, you'll get sort of extra notifications as it closes out even if it isn't a high bid just a buck above whatever somebody else put on there all right or you know a buck higher than the current bid all right now on to this the chinese amari double cup with handles these are kind of knocked around a little bit they weren't perfect that's for sure nice little nice little cups and they, they may have had lids at one point, it looks like, up here. But good decoration, despite their little bits of condition issues, in a fairly rare form. This is the thing. These, this form is pretty rare. And uh, if, you, if you like rare and oddball things, this would have been something to consider. Um, Kung Chi period. And uh, ended up going for just $42, or $52, rather, excuse me. Um, those are nice. Uh, you know, they're not perfect, but boy... Uh, you get a you get a Kung Chi Chinese uh, Chinese enamel pieces for that kind of money that's in a rare form. Um, not bad. All right, and then over here we had some good teapots were on last week. This is a very very pretty one, sort of done almost in it's a Chinese Amari, but done almost in the Kakiemon style, uh, but very nice open uh, uh, work on it. It looked to be in pretty good shape, and. Uh, didn't bring a crazy price, three hundred and eight dollars. Perfectly reasonable for that. We've all seen in the past where these, you know, these can go for uh, you know four to six hundred, six fifty. All right, not bad. Teapots are still, I think, a relatively pretty good buy. And then on to this, this very attractive, simple little double-handled cup. Uh, it had a small firing flaw on one side on the handle, but I like the feather border going around the top and these sort of stylized uh, roux heads. And then the feather border again, and then the, these little uh, acanthus leaf tips at the bottom. Nice looking little cup. This was a sweet little cup. Obviously 18th century. And uh, it ended up selling for uh, $281. But I don't think that was bad for that. That was a sweet little Kung Chi example. Nice looking thing. And then over here, another teapot. Uh, not crazy about the confusing background, but at any rate, um, it... It uh, nicely decorated. This is a, a well-known pattern in Chinese export porcelain. It was particularly popular after about 1775 or so, 1780. You see it on punch bowls. You see it on, on, on tea sets. Uh, you see it on plates, that kind of thing. Uh, there was a bit of wear to gilding to the handles, but sort of an elaborate handle with some additional elements added to it, as well as the spout, sort of a tree branch affair. 
And uh, it ended up doing $578. It was a pretty good sized pot, but it, but it was it was also a, a nice nice pattern. I like the uh, sort of Rococo uh, upper edge. Nice looking thing. And then pop over to this. This was another another export, 18th century export teapot, uh, armorial uh, type. Uh, and I thought this was a really good buy. Um, I couldn't find too much to complain about it. And uh, nice looking lid. I think the lid had a little nick out of it on one side or something, but something pretty trivial. And uh, this went for just $385 for an armorial example. All right. If you collect armorial porcelain, you should keep an eye on eBay because there's a fair bit of it turns up. And it tends to be fairly buyer friendly times. So you, you want to check, keep an eye on it. And then lastly was this little uh, Republican or 1950s period dish that went up. Very, very nicely decorated though. Very good quality. Uh, here's a, a picture of it. The faces are nicely shaded. They don't look like they've been, you know, all sunburned at the beach all day the way they can sometimes. Some of these, these 1950s pieces, um, the, the way they do the skin tones, they, they, they look like they spent six months under a heat lamp. Anyway, this was uh, a nice looking plate and it did pretty well. It brought $620. Not bad, but it was a good looking dish and, and, and high quality decoration for sure. All right, now hop over here. Um, this was something that we had uh, featured in, on the newsletter last week. I liked it. It was just a, a nice little mustard pot, kung chi period. Uh, well done. This was on Catawiki. A uh, nice little example, and it ended up selling for uh, around $400, $453 for a mustard pot. That's not bad, all right? These were sent mostly into Europe um, in very nice quality. All right, now let's have a look over and see what's going on this week coming up. There's a bunch of stuff. We have, we have a chance to get them all yet, but we'll get them out of the site. Uh, this nice 18th century export platter with a cafe uh, rim to it. And the two herons, or the, or the two geese, and uh, peacocks, rather, in the center. Uh, they look like peacocks. they got nice long tails. There you go. And the, and the giant oversized flowers above them. And then this V formation of birds, which you see on a lot of Chinese plates. They use this V formation, the way geese migrate. And uh, this nice reticulated balustrade coming around them, the little building in the background. Here's a picture of the back of the plate, pretty much how they always look, unglazed and uh, sort of that uh, you know oatmeal-y color. And uh, this went, um, this is well, this one so far is up to sixty-five dollars. It closes on Sunday. We'll see how that does. Should bring three to four hundred dollars. That's sort of the range for them these days, it seems. And then this, this nice little footed uh, crackleware piece. There's a lot of fakes of these around, um, but I happen to think this one looks pretty good to me. I like the bottom of that. It looks like it's at least a 19th century piece, maybe older. Um, you have to handle them to be absolutely certain, but it, boy, that's a good looking bottom on that. And uh, there's a nice shot of the glaze, the foot rim and all that. Lots of nice little bubbles in here, but honest looking little bubbles. I like the crackle. I like this color of this crackle. And then these sort of golden crackles over here. Uh, something you, you like to see on these. And that slightly brighter iron oxide edge on the, on the corner of the paste running around the side. All right. And you notice here there's a slight peel in the glaze, but a bit irregular. Looks pretty natural to me. And uh, this is a, a good looking little thing. And this is up for uh, nine days. It just went up. We got it. Uh, it'll be in the newsletter. It's got a couple of bids. It's up to $15, and uh, he's got it as 18th century. And he's a pretty good seller. He's, he's over in, um, in the U.K. We've had him on before. His username is Eagle2010, and uh, he tends to be pretty, pretty spot on with his, with his estimates of age. So um, if he says it's 18th century, he's probably done a lot of looking at it, and he's probably right. And if it is, it'll probably bring uh, $1,000 to $1,500, I would think. All right, but it's a nice looking thing. And then on to this, this uh, an enameled uh, pak tong hand warmers with black enamels. Enameled pak tong is pretty unusual. There's not a lot of it around. It's like a Chinese enameled silver is even rarer. But this is a good looking pair of hand warmers. Nice surface on them. They're 19th century, but very good quality. There's some wear on the bottom. And this closes in uh, on Sunday as well. It's got 20 bids. It's up to $850. And uh, it's, I think it'll, it's got a little ways to go yet. Look to see it maybe get into the uh, $1,400, $1,600 range perhaps. And we'll see how that does. And then on to this. This is a really pretty plate. Somebody actually submitted this to me. He wanted to know what I thought of it. 
And um, it's a rather interesting plate uh, because it has a lot of the characteristics of the uh, rosemander and export plates, especially the rim. Um, it's, it's sort of like a precursor to that. The, these rims with these Rococo, and they have these uh, little cartouches and panels running around them, like here. Um, this later you've seen, you saw on the post 1830s uh, export mandarin plates and that sort of thing, and with the figural scene, um, terrace scene here, some men at a table playing Go, that kind of thing. But very nice quality enamels, good decoration. Here's a picture of the back of it. Um, and uh, my, my feeling is it was made in the, probably around the first, first third, first quarter of the uh, 19th century. Good looking dish, like the way it's potted, and uh, I was glad to see it. It's a nice thing. It just went up last night. It's up to $23.50. I didn't know he was going to list it when he sent me the listing, uh, sent me the request to look at it, but um, there it is. Good looking thing. And uh, then over here, this is a fun decorative thing. This is, if, you, if you're looking for something cool and fun to hang in your house, this, this is not an extreme rarity. There's nothing, it's, it, it's just, I love the color of this. I like old panels. Uh, this is a lacquered panel. And you notice a lot of the faces are sort of washed off. They almost look like ghosts. Uh, I don't know what happened, but it got worn off. But this is a good, legitimate old piece of lacquer panel, a uh, door probably off of a cabinet, uh, early 19th century. Uh, you can see the, the, the fabric that they lay the, uh, the lacquer down onto here. They clad the wood with it, and then the, this fabric is porous, and it helps hold the uh, lacquer in place. And you can see up here where it's sort of cracked around the edge of the frame because there's a member going across here and coming down here. But I just like it. I like stuff like this. Hang them on a wall. They're very atmospheric. And this one is sort of interesting. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of activity in here. All right. And this is this just went up. And it's got one bid for 99 cents. Oh, wait a minute. This didn't just go up. This closes on Sunday. All right. It's got two days to go. It's got one bid of 99 cents. Okay, uh, if, if you're looking for something fun to hang in your house and you, and you, and you like uh, uh, Chinese uh, atmospherics and so forth, this is a pretty good thing. And it's, uh, two, it's over two feet tall, so it's decent size. I think it will look great hanging with a light over it. All right. You see, you can buy, I, I love the idea you can buy great looking Chinese things without, you know, blowing half your kid's college tuition on it. All right, and then on to this. This is over on Catawarki. Nice looking little kung shi dish, one of the molded types. Uh, beautiful little flowers in the center. Good shading of color. I like that. That's nice. That'll be at the bottom of the newsletter this week. Um, and then this is a, a, a rather nice uh, Chinese export 18th century platter. Uh, nicely formed with this very uh, well shaped rim. It needs a little, uh, looks like it needs a little filling in here and here. But the, the shape of this and that nice peel and this sort of ex checkerboard bridge going in the middle, it's all sort of interesting. It's an unusual plate. Nice steep sides to it, too, coming around here. Um, but uh, we'll see how that does. It's uh, currently uh, up to $328. It closes, it looks like, on uh, tomorrow. It closes Saturday. But it'll be in the newsletter if you want it. And uh, nice looking thing. It's already gone over its estimate. Uh, they had estimated at 220 to 270, uh, probably because it has a little bit of a, a couple of chips to it. But the form and, and the quality is quite unusual. Uh, nice looking thing. So well, we'll see how that does. And that about does it for the week. If you haven't subscribed yet, uh, please do subscribe to us here on YouTube and come over to bitemout.com and uh, sign up for the weekly newsletter and you'll get notifications on Friday night when we update the page. And um, come over and use the forum and all that good stuff. Leave us a thumbs up if you enjoy the videos. Leave a comment. <clears throat> and um, that's about it. Weekend's almost here. All right. Everybody have a great time, and we'll see you next week. And uh, don't forget, you can watch the uh, Sotheby's sale online live um, next week um, on your computer if you want to watch it. You, you have to have a Sotheby's account, but it doesn't cost you anything to open it. Just get yourself one. Same with Christie's. And um, you can watch the feed. All right, and it's fun to do. Okay, have a great weekend, and we'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.